Hi all, I haven't made a video for a while, so it must be time. A couple of things to talk about. But I think the most important one I've brought up in a couple of postings recently, and it's this idea of an attractor. Mathematically speaking, it's a set of parameters that attract, uh, for example, your heart rate. You go exercise, it goes up, and you relax, and it comes back down. So your biochemistry has established a region of normality that even when you go outside of it, it comes back. And that's what happens throughout our body. If you look at our sugar concentrations and the salt concentrations, and everything is in, in a dynamic balance. Um, so where we really, what we really need to look at is how can we use uh, the concept of dynamic balance to establish a state of health? And what I'm where I'm going with this is that at a certain point in all of our lives, we were at our optimum. For most of us, it's probably when we we're, you know, around 21 in that range. And what I'm now seeing is that when we turn on enough recycling, where we repair our damaged goods, which is what we do when we turn on fat burning, it goes by the technical name autophagy, and what it does is it basically recycles cellular components that were damaged when we were doing things, free radicals that were produced by calcium activation of our muscles and of our nerves and of our hormone production. So what, we, what our bodies really want to do if we give it the opportunity is to return to that state of health. And we're observing so many amazing things with cannabis because it is so unique our endocannabinoid system is completely unique. I mean, at this point, I really believe that it is the fundamental driver for human evolution, the evolution of vertebrates, which at this point has reached its high point in where we are right now. And I believe that that process of change is built into how we work so that we adapt not simply by the accidents of mutations, but actually directed by our biological need as dictated by the free radicals we produce and how our body responds to them in order to keep us alive and happy. So, um, back again to this concept of an attractor. And when we stop damaging ourselves greater than we fix ourselves, that's when the attractor can come into play. And that's what occurs in these incredible circumstances that we're now observing. For example, uh, my brother-in-law had severe dementia. He was a he's 80 years old, retired uh, doctor, a Romanian doctor, and um, he had lost his ability to speak English. He was completely incoherent and had to be institutionalized. And now he's regaining all of the different aspects of complexity. They haven't come in to create the whole, but he's speaking English again. He assumes the role of doctor sometimes, you know, it just hasn't all come together yet into the phase change of becoming who he was. But it's the little pieces of who he was that are now reassembling so that we hope that the uh, further assembly will occur. And that's exactly uh, really what is happening everywhere with cannabis. We're seeing all of these benefits because the endocannabinoid system regulates everything in your body from conception until death and is an anti-aging drug because it's trying to bring you back to that attractor, especially when you take a large enough quantity so that you activate the CB2 receptor, which activates fat burning, which is autophagy, which is the recycling. It's that balance. If you recycle enough, you're going to be healthier than if you damage too much. It's that simple. It's that simple. So uh, diet and fat burning is, is totally critical here. And when we use enough cannabis and we, we do the right things, we actually move ourselves further from equilibrium, which is not only health, but is actually regaining some aspects of youth. So I think the only way that, the only fountain of youth that there is, is by understanding how we work and then doing the things that have created us so that we can improve what we are. Um, and we can't do that through ignorance. We can only do it through intelligence. Um, so anyway, here we have all of these age-related illnesses, and we're being deprived of our essential nutrient. 
That's the key point here. Cannabis is totally misclassified. It is a food, and more than just being a food, it is the, one of the most essential foods because when you have cancer and you use enough cannabis and the cancer goes away, or if you have MS and you're in a wheelchair for five years and you get up and you start walking again, or you're a diabetic and you lose weight and you're not taking insulin and your sugar is normal, no matter where we look, we see cannabis is able to restore these things. To me, that is very, very simple. It says we are suffering from a nutritional deficiency. And when we restore the necessary nutrient, the deficiency goes away. It's no different than scurvy uh, with uh, vitamin C deficiency or rickets with vitamin D deficiency. Here we have age-related illnesses that come from cannabis deficiency. And if we are not allowed to consume our food, which is a fundamental violation of all aspects of human rights, signed by all of the members of the UN, and we can't starve our people, and if we're getting sick because we're not provided with the necessary nutrient, and not only not provided, that's a stupid way of saying it, we're not allowed to provide ourselves with the necessary nutrient to be healthy. That is a fundamental violation. And we're not going to take it anymore because the truth is out of the bag. When we're saving people's lives with cannabis around the world, with all of these different illnesses, because it's allowing them to return to the attractor. This is our God-given evolutionary destiny to adapt and change. And cannabis is the necessary food that we require in order for us to move to the next level of humanity where consciousness dominates rather than ignorance, fear, aggression, and all the bullshit that characterizes the idiocy of today's society driven by cannabis-deficient blips. Bye.